So my argument is, why don't we do the same for animals? Yes, it's ubiquitous. It's all over the place. But, you know, and it's not going to end overnight. But let's make a start by advocating veganism and try to educate people about veganism because ultimately that's the only thing that's going to work. The only thing that's going to shift us from the paradigm of animals as property to animals as persons is by decreasing the demand and decreasing the demand on a wide-scale basis. We can do this. We can educate. I mean, I'm, I'm absolutely convinced that we can educate people about this. I see it in, in my own life, and I, I talk to people all the time who are engaging in effective vegan advocacy without any large organization, without any money. They're doing it, and they're having an effect. I see it all the time. So this is not to say, when I use these, these, this, this argumentation strategy or whatever you want to call it, um, I am not trying to encourage people to think that and I always make clear that I'm not saying because if if I'm asked if someone says well are you saying because I consume animal products I'm the same as a rapist or a child molester or a slave owner I always respond to that by saying the institutions of slave ownership of rape of child molestation these are all similar to animal exploitation in that They completely ignore the personhood of moral persons. They are institutions which treat moral persons exclusively as means to the ends of others and thereby turn them into things who are outside of the moral community. So in that sense, these institutions are the same. And actually, many of the attempts to regulate slavery fail for the same reason, because human slavery and animal ownership and exploitation, the institution of animal exploitation and ownership, function similarly as economic matters. I mean, you know, animal welfare doesn't work, neither did slave welfare. So there were lots of laws that supposedly protected slaves, and they didn't work. Um, They didn't work for the same reason they don't work with with animals. Um, And I've discussed that in other commentaries and and in the books I've written and a lot of the other things that I've done, so you can can look at that stuff if you want. Um, But I... so yeah, the institutions are similar, but this is not to say that everybody who who eat, consumes animal products has the moral status of a of a of a rapist or a, or a, a, a child molester, or whatever. Morality is a matter of intention, at least as far as I'm concerned, and I realize that that may be controversial with some people, and that's fine. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, morality is primarily a matter of intention. It's it's what are your intentions, and and. Somebody who is consuming animal products, do I think that's a good thing? No. Do I think they're acting immorally? Yet they're engaging in actions which I think cannot be morally justified. But as, but as far as making judgments about their personal moral integrity, yeah, I'm real critical of animal welfare. I'm real critical of the consumption of animal products. But I do not make judgments, moral judgments about people. And I would encourage you not to do that either. Because... Morality is a matter of intention. Most people don't know real... I mean, I mean, p- people need to be educated so that they can make intelligent moral choices. Now, if you get to a point, and this is a problem, this is a problem that we all have with our personal relationships, right? I mean, you get to a point where someone's really educated and understands everything and then turns to you and says, and maybe you've had this experience I have in my life. I mean, I've been doing it for 30 years, so there are very few experiences in this regard I have not had. Um, but where somebody turns to you and says... I know what you're saying. What you're saying is right. I agree with what you're saying, and I don't care. I mean, I, I, yeah, you're absolutely right. There is no moral justification for what I'm doing, and I don't care. That can, you know, that, that, that you may come to a point with somebody where you've educated them, and they understand, and they, they still, they, they turn to you and say, I don't care. I'm going to continue this behavior because I don't care. Then you have to make a decision about the moral integrity of that person. But where you live in a society where animal animal consumption is ubiquitous, I mean, everybody does it, and they do it all the time. Most people can't think clearly about this because they've never been asked to think clearly about it. They could if they were, you know, if they were educated, which is what this enterprise is all about, isn't it? Is educating them. They could think clearly about it, but no one's asking them to. So... You know, I think it's really important to realize that default principle one, default position, people are really good at heart, they care about morality, they're educable. Okay? Don't make moral judgments about them. You can you can 
assess the morality of actions and of institutions. Yes, consuming animals and exploiting animals is no more morally justifiable than is any other form of depersonization or thingification or whatever you want to call it. But that doesn't mean that everybody who engages in consuming animals is morally the same as a rapist or a pedophile or whatever. So when you're talking to people, be thinking, because you know what? Your presentation, your presentation when you're when you're talking to people is influenced by these sorts of think these sorts of feelings that you have. And so if your default position is people are good, and the person I'm talking to may be doing things I don't like, but you know what? I'm gonna try to ignite the spark in that person. I'm going to try to get to what's really fundamentally good in that person and I'm going to shake it up a little bit and I'm going to get that person to see a different moral vision. And I know I can do it because I know that spark is waiting to be ignited and I can do it. And I'm not going to make moral judgments about this person. I'm not going to, while I'm talking with this person, be thinking, this is a bad person. I'm not going to think that. I'm going to think this is a person who's who's struggling, who's trying to find a way. And I'm, I'm honored to be a part of that. That's principle number one. Principle number two. Default position, people aren't stupid. There is a strain of elitism that runs through the animal movement that is disconcerting beyond all belief. This idea, well, we can't talk to you. As a matter of fact, again... Every day, I mean, I could point to examples that I engage in, that I, that I encounter every single day of these things that I'm talking about. For example, this morning, I, I um, had an exchange on Twitter uh, with um, something called Vegan Etsy, I think, uh, uh, E-T-S-Y. Uh, and it's apparently some collective of people who have vegan businesses. And they were uh, criticizing me because they were saying that I'm just a, not realistic or delusional, I believe is what they said, because people aren't going to become vegan overnight. Well, I never said that they were going to become vegan overnight. What I'm saying is that we ought to be clear. And they were responding to my criticism of Meat Free Monday. I think Meat Free Monday is absurd. I think the idea of promoting this, you know, the, the, the idea of promoting a distinction between meat and other animal products is, is crazy. It ca- you cannot justify a distinct, there is no morally coherent distinction between meat and other animal products. Dairy, dairy, animals used in dairy are kept alive longer. They're treated as a general matter. They're treated every bit as badly, if not worse, than animals used for meat, which is pretty hard to do. But, I mean, they're treated horribly, as bad, if not worse. And they all end up in the same slaughterhouse anyway. So this idea that we promote vegetarianism. I mean, I have an essay on my website Maybe I'll post it uh, along with the announcement of the podcast about about um, vegetarianism as a gateway to veganism. That's nonsense. That is nonsense. And and um, you know, so trying reinforcing this distinction between meat and other animal products is simply again another marketing tool. Let's you know, let's let's let people or, or let's encourage people to go and you know bake cupcakes with welfare ingredients or whatever they're being, you know, and, and, and continue to eat uh, all sorts of suffering and death in dairy products. And let's make them, you know, let, let, let's, let's, let's reinforce this artificial distinction between meat and other animal pro- products. That's crazy. Okay. Now, yeah, I realize people are not going to go vegan overnight, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't really be clear. As a matter of fact, what it does mean is that we should be really clear we should be really clear and present a clear, unequivocal vegan message. Going back to principle one, not in a judgmental way. In a way in which we take the other person seriously as a moral in, you know, interlocutor. I mean, somebody who's having a, a serious discussion with us. Somebody that we believe is good at heart. Who is, who does care about moral issues. Okay, But we ought to be clear with people that no consumption of animal products can be justified.